Hey, this is Brian from Logic Pro Hacks. Welcome back. Well, the other day I was talking about how to enable Reason Rewire into Logic Pro and how to multi-track multiple MIDI instruments. I did bring up the point, you know, how are you going to be able to record this in Logic because the audio is coming from a different source. And the only way you're able to bring in audio is through an aux channel. You can't do it through a regular audio channel. And then the other problem is you can't record audio on an aux channel. There's a way around it, and I'll show you how. Showed in the video before, basically you create a external MIDI instrument, and this is where you're going to route your MIDI from Reason, and you just leave the output alone hit create so we can just put this up at the top here and then go over here in this file icon box look for reason and then then you would pick your instrument and I just realized I don't have an instrument that I need to pick so I'm gonna go and bring reason over here I already have it open swell pad too sounds pretty good so I'm gonna hold down the shift key so nothing connects there we go. Nothing connected. Got it. And then I have three and four available on my audio inputs. And please, I'll leak in the video I did earlier on how to I explain all this and how to route all this. So I'm just lightly going over it right now. I'm more trying to cover how to record the audio into Logic. So we have that routed in there, and that's good. That's on 5 and 6. Pull this over here. So now, Swell Pad 2. That's it right there. It just automatically names it. Let me just uncheck that so we can get out of that. And I could, I'll just name it Swell Pad. And then for the icon thing, I actually want to change it. In Logic Pro X, the latest version, I think it's like 10.2 something, they allow you to do custom icons. And you can pick and choose what you want. And I actually went online and found a transparent logo of Reason. And so that's what I'm using for my icon for the MIDI. Then I want to create an audio channel. So go over here, hit the little plus mark create audio no one but just leave it as default like this hit create and then I'm gonna do is I'm gonna name this swell pad but I'm gonna put a little a at the end to signify that it's an audio and then I'm gonna change my icon to this green one because I think it looks better it's easier to see and identify that it's audio and then while I think about it open up your preferences when you go into logic pro X preferences and go to audio so in your audio go to your audio and then go to general and then just make sure that you do not have this one checked input monitoring only for focus tracked it just causes where you have to have both R and and the little I checked both at the same time and I just like this for personal preference and I find it easier to do this recording audio I can monitor it easier swell pad audio channel created and we have the MIDI created now we need to go into our mix channel you hit the X key to get down in here so what we're gonna do so we're going to actually create a new auxiliary channel strip. You can hit Control N if you're in this area. But I just go Options. And then we're going to change this input to Reason. 
I'm going to check 5 and 6 because that's what I have checked for that instrument in Reason. If you look over here, just hit the tab key to get around. You'll see 5 and 6 right here. We have 5 and 6, then on our stereo out right here on that same aux channel, we're actually going to go to a new bus. I'm going to go to bus 3 since that's the next available bus. And then it automatically creates it. If it doesn't, you just do options, create new auxiliary channel strip, and just make sure that you name this top one the next available bus, which is bus 3. Now, for bus 3, we're going to go ahead and say no output, and I'll explain later on. So you want it to look like that. And then make sure that your volume down here is up. Just hit the Alt and click on it, and that will set it to default. What I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to name this, I'm going to name this aux reason R 5 and 6 because I know what channels they're coming from. I'm going to hit the tab key, I'm going to name this bus R 5 4 slash 6. You can name it any anything you want. This just helps me identify what channels they are in and how things are routed. It just seems simpler to me that way. And then now we're going to go over to this audio channel where it says swell pad and we're going to change this input. First we're just going to click on that little zero. We're going to change it to stereo. One zero means mono. And when I click on it, it changes it to stereo. And then I'm going to put in the bus input the aux input 5 and 6. Good. So now if we turn it down, it's like I uncheck these. I only check this one. I should be able to hear it. There's swell pad. Awesome. Cool. So that's how you enable the audio channel so that way when you do a recording in Logic now hold on here I'll show you how to do a, a full-on recording to bounce it out you have it in your audio channel you can put in automation and effects so then what I can do now is I can put a nice little effect do a send on my audio channel here for the swell pad so go here send Let's say like we could do 10 or something, or whatever we want to do. Just bring it up a little bit and then go over here to 10. And we'll just do a nice little plugin I got the other day made by Audio Damage called EOS2. A little great reverb plugin. I just love this thing. It just has such a nice sound to it. It's made by, it was programmed, the programming in it, I believe, was done by the same guy that was, that did Valhalla reverbs. And so then I'm just going to lift up the mix, since it's being bust out, max that out all the way, and just leave default. There we go. So we got that. Now let's just test it out, see what it sounds like. Well, i got to make sure my thing's right there. There it is. I hear it. Let's turn it up a little bit more. Yeah, that sounds nice. Really nice. So then you can see right over here I'm starting to peak a little bit. So I can actually turn down the level, the input level. It is coming in hot. And then we can just go ahead and just make sure we name this EOS verb. And might as well just color them anyways. Say Alt C 
bring up the color thing. And like my reverb's like a purple or something, not pink. No, it's something down here. I don't know. Yeah, that's good enough. And then I also like to signify here my bus and my aux. There we go. So that is how we got that one. And then let's go ahead and I, I promised you I would show you how to do a recording. So let's go ahead and just get something in here to record. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change my BPMs down to 90 because that is the BPM that I like for doing something ambient. I always use 90 for ambient stuff. Let that one hang out. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just drop and drag this and hold my Alt key down and put it on the next one. And then do the same for this one. And then I can play each one and I'll just hit mute for the other two. And maybe move like this down. See what that sounds like? Oh, nice. Okay. And then move this down. Okay. So we got something going on here. Play it out. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, I love it. So then, to bounce this out, all we have to do is just basically just hit the command D, opens up the new window, just pick where you wanna do. I'm gonna do a WAV file and an MP3, and then here's the real ticker. You wanna make sure it's real time don't do offline real time and then do include audio tail you don't have to I choose to do so and then hit OK and look take note of this where it starts at it's starting at bar 1 and it's ending at 129 so I'm like where the heck is 129 we don't want that so we're gonna go to I want 16, so, all right, let me show you a trick. If I enable this loop to like bar 17, and then I hit the command B, it automatically puts that segment into start and end. And I'm gonna just give it a little bit longer, to let it tail out. Command B, and I don't really have to include this because I've already did it here. And just make sure that you click real time mode because it will not record external instruments if it's offline. Offline, you have to use real time. Okay, hit OK. And I'll just say cool pad. Hit bounce. open it up in Audacity and just hit play we were able to bounce something out in logic from reason and remember my friends big rive I hope this helps someone out there please subscribe give me a like more of this networking kind of stuff with music 
And if you have any questions, concerns, drop me a comment. I'll usually respond back within the hour or so. Remember my friends, big groovy.